The sole purpose of this SwiftUI tutorial is to develop the snappy feature of the custom button. Nothing more, nothing less. But it is a good thing since this is the one feature that makes this application so great. That said, let's see how this unique behavior works in action. The first thing worth knowing about it. By the end of this lecture, users can drag and swipe the button in the right direction. The second point, and by doing that, the button's shape will grow horizontally as well. The third point, when we stop dragging the button halfway and we release our fingers from the screen, then watch out for what's happening. Did you see that the button snapped to back at starting position? Awesome. The fourth point, now let's see what happens when we swipe the button more than halfway, shall we? And there it is. The button snapped to the right edge of this component. And this will trigger the screen change. How cool is that? Let's do it again. As you can see, this behavior is quite complex. And we need to develop these four main features in order to make it works. All right. Without further ado, let's open Xcode and start working on it. Code preparation. Would you please open the onboarding file and scroll to the top? We will create two new properties here. The reason behind it is that we need to know two important pieces of information about this button. These are the button's width and the button's offset size. That's being said, let's start with creating them, shall we? Add state private var button width double equals UI screen dot main dot bounds dot width minus 80. The button's width property is the actual screen's width minus 80 points. And this width value depends on the actual iPhone device's screen size. So the button's width is the largest on the iPhone Max and the smallest on the iPhone mini devices. But in each case, there will be 40 points padding added on the left and the right edges. Also, this is a computed property and we won't change it. Please, keep in mind that its primary purpose is to establish some constraints to the button's horizontal movement. Now let's move on, and let's create the second property. Enter the following code. Add state private var button offset cg float equals zero. This property will represent the offset value in the horizontal direction. As you know, the button has two states. There is an active state when users are dragging it, and there is an idle state when the button is inactive. That's why we initialized this offset size with a zero value. And, this offset value will constantly be changing during the dragging activity. Alright, enough with the talk. After all this prep work, we need to implement all this information into code. But before we continue the development, first, I will hide the sidebar and turn on the minimap. This minimap can help developers to navigate from one point to another one with lightning speed. As you can notice, we can see the main three sections of this layout in this minimap. But not only that, if we hover over the cursor on this minimap while pressing the command key, we can get more information about the code structure. How cool is that? Now back to work. First, we will add this new button width property to the footer section. To scroll down to the end of this section, we can do it by clicking this part on the minimap as I show you. Awesome. Now, please insert the cursor into the frame modifier and enter this code there. Frame. Width. Button width. This will add a width constraint to this button. After that, we need to find the draggable red circle button inside this footer section and add a new offset modifier to it. Scroll up a little bit and add this new modifier to the Z stack as I do. Offset. X. 120. Can you see how we move the red button to the right? You can play with this offset value if you wish and start putting together all puzzle pieces in your head about how this component will work at the end. First, we will focus only on the red circle shape. Of course, we won't use this arbitrary offset value for real. My only goal was to demonstrate to you what's coming up. Please, modify the offset value to zero as I do. Okie dokie. The second step is to replace the very basic on tap gesture with a new drag gesture. So let's do it right now. Enter the following replacement code. Gesture. Drag gesture. New comment. The end of the gesture block. 
with this little code. We have just added a brand new drag gesture modifier to the red circle button. However, it will not do anything until we say what to do. Drag gesture. You know, every drag gesture has two particular states. The first state is when the drag user activity is happening. The second one is when this drag activity has ended. We can tell the program what we want to do with the red button by knowing this information. Let's start by adding a new unchanged modifier to this drag gesture, shall we? Enter this code. Drag gesture. Unchanged. Gesture. In. You can see a new parameter called gesture inside the actions closure. And this parameter contains the gesture's new value. This value gives us information about the actual movement. Now we can put any actions inside it. And these actions will be triggered every time the gesture's value changes. Please, keep in mind that what we are going to enter inside this closure is specific to our custom button. Enter the following code. If gesture dot translation dot width greater than zero button offset equals gesture dot translation dot width Let's hold on a sec and talk about what this code does, shall we? As you can see, there is a conditional statement. And the reason behind it, that we want to run any actions inside it only when users drag the red circle shape in the right direction. It's obvious since we want to allow only a left to right movement at first. Of course, when the button is already dragged to the right somewhat, users will be allowed to drag it to the left. But the first dragging must be initiated from the left to right direction. I hope that you can understand. The next thing is the actual action. It's not hard to understand this code at all. We only added a new value to the offset property about how much we move our finger on the screen in the horizontal direction. So far, so good. However, if we build and run the application, we could see nothing visible on the screen. To move the red circle button, first, we need to change its offset value. So let's do that. Navigate to the offset modifier and replace the zero value with the button offset property. Enter this code. Offset, X, button offset. As a side note to this, when the program recognizes any value changes, then we can see the button's movement in the horizontal direction. But enough with the talk, and let's see how this works in action, shall we? Build and run the project as usual. After the launch, we will tap and drag the red button to the right. And there it is. As you can see, the drag feature works as it should. However, as you can notice on the screen, nothing stops us from moving the button outside the component. You know, developers often find themselves in such situations when they can take only one step in the right direction. Our initial goal was to achieve this movement, and we succeeded by that. Now, we need to deal with all different kinds of scenarios, such as preventing users from moving the button outside its scope. And it is precisely what we will do until we cover all possible scenarios. Feature Enhancement Please switch back to Xcode, and let's find the place where we can add new constraints to the dragging gesture. As you can see, previously, we created a conditional statement to control the initial movement. This is a great candidate for us to make the conditional part more robust. Navigate the cursor to this line and enter the following code. Double ampersand sign. Button offset. Less or equal than. Button width. Minus 80. This new part of the conditional statement will prevent users from moving the red button outside. You may wonder why we subtract 80 points from the button's width. As you know, the red button size is 80 by 80 points. And unlike most other UI elements in the SwiftUI framework, ZStack uses the top left corner coordinate system. We ensure that the button keeps its position inside the component regarding the horizontal directions with this subtraction. There is not much to talk about it. Let's see how this code works in action. Please, build and run the project again. After the launch, please try to move the red button outside the component and see what will happen. And there it is. If you followed me precisely, then you will not be able to move out the red button. We have just vastly improved this feature by adding such a little code to this program. Now close the application and let me show another thing. You should notice, after the restart, that when we leave the red button somewhere between the two edges of the component, 
then our button stays in there doing nothing. And what do you think about it? As I mentioned to you a couple of times before, our goal is to develop a brand new UI element from scratch with custom features. And as developers, we are responsible for any aspect of how this user interface works. What is missing now is the very next step we will work on. Our next goal is to move back the red button to its original position each time when we stop the dragging movement with our finger on the screen. Having said that, let's jump back to Xcode and let's make this happen. Feature Improvement Before, I mentioned that any drag gestures has two modifiers. And it's time to put in action the on-ended drag gesture modifier. Would you please place the cursor outside the on-changed modifier and start coding? On, ended. Underscore. In. Button offset. Equals, zero. And, that's all that we needed to it in order to make this feature work. We do not need any parameters here. We just told the program that we want the red button in position zero when we stop dragging it. Nothing fancy there. And the beauty in the SwiftUI framework is that we can accomplish so many things with so little code. Now, let's see this code in action, shall we? After the launch, we need to drag the button to the right and release our fingers from the screen. If everything goes well, then we should see how the red button was snapped to its starting position. It works without any problem as it should do. How fantastic is that? Let's try it out a couple of times. There is no doubt that we have made great progress in developing this component so far. I can just hope that we are on the same page. But you know what? We can make it even better. So far, no matter where we release the button, it will be moved back to zero. Yeah, this is not what we exactly want to be frank. I think that it would be much better if we could snap this button to the right edge in certain circumstances. What about if we split off the component into two portions? With this plan, we could move the button back to zero position in the left half area, and we can snap the button to the right edge in the right half area. Do you like this plan? I hope so. Then let's jump back to Xcode as I do. We are still working on the unended drag gesture modifier since this new feature is related to it. Please enter a new line inside this modifier. And let's enter this specific code. If button offset greater than button width divided by 2 button offset equals button width minus 80 is onboarding view active equals false else button offset equals 0 in this simple new conditional statement. We compared the button's offset and width values to each other. In the first part of it, if the red button is on the right area, then we snap it to the right edge of the component. Moreover, we switch the screen statement from the onboarding screen to the home screen. In case of it, when the red button is in the left area and users release their fingers from the screen, then we move back this button to the left edge of the component. It's as simple as that. But don't take my word for granted. Let's test this new code. After the launch, first, we can check out what's happening when we release the button in the left half of the component. Did you catch it? The red button was instantly moved back to its starting position. Now, what's about the right side? Let's drag and move the button to the right half of the component and check out what will happen. And, there it goes. We snap the button to the right edge of the component and switch screens as well. How fancy is that? The only thing that is still not done yet is the button's background. So far, we just focused on the red circle button and abandoned its background shape. We need to work on this background shape in the rest of this tutorial to complete our work. Deformable shape. Let's switch back to Xcode. And let's find the capsule section in the footer block. We can even use the minimap to do that. If we look at this code, then we can realize that by providing the same height and width for this shape, we created a circle shape. And this was totally in line with our intentions. Users must see a circle button in the inactive state. However, when they drag and move this button, then this geometry shape should change its dimension horizontally. And this is the perfect time and place to make this feature happen. First, we will replace the hard-coded width value with a changeable value. Enter this code, frame modifier, width, Button offset, plus, 80. Again, you may ask why we added 80 points to this offset size. 
please do not forget that the initial value of the button's offset is zero. And that's why we needed to add this 80 to it. So we got a circle shape in the button's inactive state. So, what do you think about this program? Shouldn't we just run a final test and check out how this pretty button works in action? I have got you. Let's build and run the project before we call it a day, shall we? After the launch, we can finally test every aspect and feature of this complex button. Let's check out how the snapback feature works. Can you see the changes in the button's background? It works like a charm. Now let's drag and move this button till to the right edge of the component. There are no glitches in how this button operates. Now, let's play a little bit with it. All right, by the way, how much do you like this recently developed custom button component? I genuinely hope that you enjoyed this step-by-step -step tutorial and you are eager to do more. There is no question about how great you have done so far. So, please, let me congratulate you. You really, really deserve my honest appreciation. Also, in the following tutorials, we will make our application even better by adding impressive animation and other interactivity to it. Are you ready for the next challenge? I hope so. Until then, happy coding.